Fada'il A'mal, More Trouble Than It's Worth, Part 15, Fabrication Denial. Another one, another one, another one, another one. There is a brother, or there is a group, a podcast that uh, made a video with a very strange title. Uh, the title of the video was Ashavali Tanvi and the Strange World of Deobandis. And uh, it seems from the video that the intent was to attack the entire heritage of Darul Alum and uh, give wind to sectarian Islam. Hello, welcome to part 15 of the ongoing series, the FA More Trouble Than It's Worth. So um, I approximate the next set of videos the next cluster will be about four separate parts and being four separate parts in addition to deconstructing the tablighi jamaat and their literature and their founder um, i will give you the sources from the thesis that we've been looking at which is the one submitted to the university of birmingham and uh, the author is Yus uh, yunus at turkistani and in addition to that work, I will give you other works uh, related to other specialists in the science of Hadith, particularly from a Western perspective. And even though they come from a Western perspective, their sources are heavily based upon uh, Occidental and Oriental sources together in multiple languages. But just a little comment upon this uh, individual who introduced our section. This was in response to... Um, the series or the podcast that was done by the Mad Mamluks and he gives a screenshot of it and their response to the Diobandis it was entitled The Strange World of Dioband and he makes out like they were mocking the Dioband and they were giving rise to sectarianism and uh, being uh, at variance with uh, other Muslims uh, the simple way to judge if they are mocking and if they are causing sectarianism, is to watch the Mad Mamluks podcast. And any honest person will see that they simply are pointing out very serious errors within that group. And that's exactly what the GR channel has been doing to date. Pointing out, proving from their own literature, very problematic issues that they need to address. In any case... Um, I'll give you a couple more snippets of uh, that individual who is Sheikh Omar Baloch and uh, towards the end of this uh, set of videos, this you know, couple of videos, I'll give you proof how they use weak ahadith in order to bolster their practice and their belief. And again, that will be something that everyone can check in any language they wish. Here we come to page number 64. Now, just so you know, page number 64 of this thesis is actually the works of uh, the um, uh, writer of the FA. And uh, his name is Mohammed Zakaria Kandahlawi. Uh, and it's actually a response that he gave to a person that was writing to him, questioning him about the authenticity of his book. And this has already been given in part 11, but I didn't read it fully so today i'll read it for you fully and i'll actually give you the response or the analysis that dr turkistani gives on this correspondence between the question of the supplicant and the author of the fa it says and this is letter number 32 i had an argument with a man because of your book fada'il namaz he said that all ahadith mentioned in this book are fabricated and have weak chains he also said many bad things about you. I would like you to tell me whether there are any fabricated ahadith in this book. And the fabricated category is called mawdu'. His answer. There are no fabricated hadith in this book, but some have been labelled as being weak. I would like to tell you that the scholars of hadith have said that it is permissible to use weak ahadith in relation to good actions. 
As to those ahadith that have been called weak, I have mentioned all details regarding it alongside. It is not suitable to argue with people regarding such minor issues because this would be very harmful for Muslims in general if everyone were to argue on such small matters. Tell the person who argued with you to write to me about all the weak ahadith in this book and I will think about it. So that's the letter in its entirety. And as I said, it's already been mentioned in part 11. This is just a reiteration. What does uh, Dr. Yu, uh, Turkistani say? How does he analyze this correspondence? He says, We can see from the author's reply that he admits that some of the ahadith are weak, which he justifies, i.e. via fada'il a'mal. We can also see that he clearly denies that any of the ahadith is fabricated. This is his opinion. However, the conclusions of the study, meaning his study, the one that we're studying now, do not corroborate the author's claim, as they confirm the existence of a number of fabricated ahadith in the book as shown in the previous diagram. And these diagrams are the isnads that I've uh, posted before. And coming up, there'll be a couple of pie charts to indicate and show in a visual way exactly the amount of weak and fabricated and baseless uh, contents of the FA. Um, here are four examples of fabricated ahadith mentioned in the book based on the conclusions of the study and then he proceeds to give uh, a number of ahadith and the book is replete uh, with um, examples of weak hadith. So here is denial, it's the denial of fa fabrication denial. Now um, I come to two very interesting authors and then these interesting authors are based upon two theses that I will cover in the next couple of pages and it will actually go a bit into the Quran because one of these authors uh, wrote, James, John Burton wrote about the Quran and there's a very interesting uh, instance of the Satanic Verses event. So I will talk about the Satanic Verses event in time and to see how scholars of hadith, specifically uh, Muhammad Albani, Muhammad Nasruddin Al Albani, and uh, another Sheikh called Ashami, uh, specifically how they dealt, how hadith scholars dealt with the Satanic Verses controversy. In any case, um, uh, presently we are looking at the following two works. The first of the works is this doctoral thesis that was submitted uh, to the University of Glasgow and the year of submission was 1994. It says it's called In the Early Days of Islam, a Critical Study of a Western Approach. And that's by an author called Fathuddin Bayanuni. And that was in 1994 at the University of Glasgow. He specifically looked at the works of James Robson because he was very prolific in hadith um, authorship. And then the other thesis is this was submitted a lot more recently uh, in March 2011 uh, called A Critical Study of Western Views on Hadith with Special Reference to the Views of James Robson and John Burton. And that was the University of Birmingham, the Department of Religion, or Theology and Religion. So these are the two authors that I'll be looking at. James Robson is particularly well known in the Muslim world because he translated a very popular book called Mishkat al-Masabih, which is widely available uh, across uh, English speaking world. Uh, and it's English translation with explanatory notes. And that was published by a publishing house called uh, Sheikh Mohammed Ashraf. Uh, John Burton is not as well known in the English speaking world amongst the laity uh, because he didn't write about hadith but he is well known for his work on uh, Nasr which is abrogation and he is well known uh, uh, in regards to his um, Qur Quranic studies. He is not to be confused with another individual called Richard Burton uh, who was an, an Arabist and also an Orientalist. So. Uh, it's easy to get confused between James Robson, John Burton, Richard Burton, etc. Um, here is just a little bit of a brief introduction to the two of them, and it's taken uh, variously from the two theses I've just mentioned. It says the following. 
Among those scholars who were basically post Shatians after Shat, writing in 1951 to 2000 was James Robson and John Burton. Their works are extensive and widely read by those interested in Hadith. Robson and Burton are eminent figures in the field in the West. Robson is considered a scholar whose knowledge in Hadith literature is almost certainly greater than any other living Islamist in the Western world. Burton is well known for his views on the Quran and one of the best known in the West on the subject of abrogation, Nasr in Islam. And he is the one that I will mention when it comes to looking at the Satanic verses. Um, little is known about the, the views of Burton uh, concerning Hadith because James Robson is clearly the specialist there. Burton comes through in his works on Hadith as a scholar who's penetrating uh, insight into Islam, uh, who has a penetrating insight into Islamic tradition. Um, and that's basically just an introduction to the two scholars and Orientalists that we'll be studying. Stay tuned for many more parts.